is all the unclaimed luggage. It looks like it. But what about the foreign currencies? I bought them. Right. French and German, mostly. Oh, well, let's get going. What's the matter with that? gone out. I don't get it. It's all right now. Let's go. Did you touch a switch? I didn't go anywhere near it. What did you do over here? Nothing. Just move this up, that's all. That's it. That's what does it. Well, how can it? I don't know, but it does. the rest of the luggage? Yes. Whose? I don't know. There was no label on it. See how bright my watch is. Quick. Let's get the supervisor. Minister, Sir Charles. Sir Charles, this is appalling. Are you quite sure there's no mistake? Yes, Minister. Brady and I have been through the entire cargo with a section of an atom core. I'm afraid so. And that's what caused the fluorescence of the airport? Correct. Take a look at this, sir. And it's found amongst the wreckage of the aircraft. And that's the section hidden inside? Yes, it's a canister of uranium-235, which is used in the manufacture of an atom bomb. A complete bomb consists of two sections like that. The explosion is affected by firing one half against the other. But who would want to smuggle an atom bomb into England and why? Brady has a theory about that. He thinks another war would not be fought by firing off atomic weapons. No. My guess is that the atom bombs are being placed under the capital cities of the world in times of peace. What? Such bombs could be detonated by a radio signal. London, Paris, New York could all be blown up at the outbreak of war before a shot was fired. And you think that's part of such a bomb? Yes, I do. All the other parts could be manufactured privately in England. Only the atom cores would have to come from abroad. But why have they smuggled in only one part? My guess is the other half is already in England. You mean that somewhere an atom bomb is being planted under London? Well, we've got to find out where it is. We've got to stop it. Excuse me, sir. Take a look out here. London. Ten million people. Where do you suggest we start looking? I don't know. Nobody survived the crash, sir. We checked the passenger list and the crew. No one's suspicious. It's just possible that someone on board was an innocent messenger who didn't know what he was carrying. Yes. But the important thing is that having lost that half of the core, it's pretty certain that someone's going to try and bring in a replacement. You think so, Brady? I'd like to bet that someone's planning that right now.
Are you ready to leave? It's time to go. Well, there's plenty of time for a ship, madam. It's not far to the coast. I've said I'd like to leave now because I don't like driving fast. Very well, madam. Oh, have you seen my golf clubs? I can't find them. I had them collected to be cleaned. I already told you there was no time for that. They were very dirty. They will not be long. Madame's golf club, monsieur. There we are, madam. I told you there was no need to worry. Please have these things collected and put in the car. This is my passport. This is my chauffeur. Lady Peevisham, isn't it? I've just seen your photograph in the morning paper. Congratulations on winning the tournament. Thank you. Have you uh, anything to declare? No, nothing at all. No. Is this the cup? Yes. Very nice, too. everything? Yes, sir. Oh, what about the golf clubs? Oh, thanks to you. Mm, Looks like a nice set to me. Well, I suppose you played with these last week. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, I hope they bring you lots of luck. Thank you. Whitehall 7402, please. Hello. Yes, speaking. What? Are you sure of that? Absolutely sure. I just spoke to her. Right. How long ago? Thanks a lot. Put me through to Peter Brady urgently. Oh, Sir Charles. What? Helen Peversham? Well, that's uh, Lord Peversham's wife, isn't it? Yeah. The girl has just won the French golf tournament. That seems very unlikely. After all, Peversham is the man who's always agitating against violence. He was one of the demonstrators against the atom bomb. Yes, I know all that, Brady, but the fact remains she's just arrived in this country with a canister of uranium-235. Call for me at my office. We're going to need you immediately. Invisible. <laughs> Congratulations on your success. Thank you, Wayne. Hello, Helen. Darling. You have a good trip. Oh, I had a wonderful time, and I won. Yes. I read about that. Congratulations. I don't suppose you missed me. Of course I did. I didn't expect you back so soon. I, I was just going out. I sent a telegram. I, well, I hurried back especially to be in time for the dinner this evening. I'm sorry I have an appointment this evening. Oh, Larry, not this evening. I have a lot to do, Helen. I'm involved in a project. It's very important. What is it? Well, you'll know soon. Then you'll understand. I must go. But, Larry, I... <laughs> Hello? Yes? 
What magazine? Oh, yes, sir. I see. Action photographs. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll collect my clubs and I'll come along right now. Waring, where did Hans to put my clubs? He left them in the car. <laughs> no, Waring, I saw him bring them in. I don't think so, madam. He brought in the rest of the luggage. He left the clubs in the car, and Lord Peterson was now driven off in it. Waring, I saw Hans to bring the clubs in. He put them down here. I'll call him. Oh, don't bother to do that. Just get the clubs, please. Anstra! Waring, do you want me to get the clubs myself? Do you not take my word, madam? Well, that has nothing to do with it. I assure you, madam. Hanstra, you brought my clubs in, didn't you? Uh, pardon me? You took them down there. I saw you. No, madam. You must have made a mistake. Very well. What else could I do? She'd have seen you were still here. Come on, Peterson. We've got a lot of work to do before your wife gets back. Can I help you? I was looking for Lord Peterson. I'm afraid he's not come back as yet. Are you sure? Yes. Well, when Lord Peterson comes in, will you please tell him I've gone to bed? Yes. My wife, she's gone to bed. Let's get on with it. Anster's ready. That's Beavish's house. A side entrance to the garage and no other way up. I'll leave my car here for you, Brady. Right. I'll leave everything to you. I reckon you'll do better on your own. Yeah. We don't want to do anything to arouse suspicion. There's too much in the balance. You do whatever you think best. And call me up on this radio. Right. I'm going to have a look round before I try and get into the house. Well, good luck. Thanks. What are you doing? I... I... Something's going on in this house, Larry. You've got to tell me what's happening. Ellen, I can't. Not now. Something to do with wearing, isn't it? 
You're frightened of him. No. No, I'm not. And Hanstra, too. Are you being blackmailed? Oh, it's nothing like that. They're very fine men. Fine men? Wearing at Hanstra? Men of vision. They're taking terrible risks for the sake of the world. Harry, this is ridiculous. They've, they've been with us such a short while. How can you trust them? Helen, I should. No, I... I can't tell you anymore. You've got to trust me. But, Larry, I must know. It's only for a few more hours. Tomorrow, I promise you, I'll explain everything. All right. Good night. Hello, Sir Charles. Hello, Sir Charles. Brady here. Hello, Peter. Any results? I found the golf bag. What was left of it. The canister had been in the base. My guess is they're going to take it somewhere this evening. Peversham's car is packed with tools. All right, Peter. Charles, we're on the move. This car's just pulling up. Right, Peter, we'll stand by. <laughs> it's heading south. Looks as though we're going across the river. Keep on his tail, Peter. He's driven his car off the road. He's getting out. He's taking some sacks from the car. He's driving off. I'm going to see what he's done. Charles? Brady here. Hello, Brady. I just guessed wrong. He didn't bring the bomb here to bury it. He brought a lot of rubble from his own house. They must have put the bomb in his cellar. Right, Brady. We'll come round straight away. We'll surround the place, then wait for you. Okay. You heard that? Yes, sir, Charles. Right, come on. Another bucket of sand. Our aristocratic friend will be very pleased now. His dream of peace has come true. <laughs> he will now expect us to plant bombs in Moscow and Warsaw. I think we better finish with Tivashim after this. It would be safer. The 
Is it finished now? Yes, it's perfect now. All ready to cement it in. Martin, bring the wire mesh. Dangerous. Better take her downstairs till his lordship gets back. Yes. Come on. All right, Answer. Surely you realize you can say nothing or you betray your husband. He doesn't know what you're doing. He organized everything. He paid for it. We are to place bombs under all the great cities. That is the plan. Then we shall force the whole world to remain at peace. That's not true. You don't want peace, but my husband does. You've double-crossed him. I know what you're really doing. You just want to blackmail the West. You've heard a little too much, Lady Peevisham. You're very unlucky. That must be him. Larry, call the police! Helen! Hey, what's going on with her? She's seen the bomb. We trust her. We don't trust anybody. Look, where are you? Larry, darling. Be the police. Sir Charles. Well, I think you've got the lot now. <laughs> Thanks, Brady. And the bomb? Right under your feet, Sir Charles. What? But it's no longer a danger. Now we have the men who plan to set it off. Nice work, Brady. 